Okay, hello and welcome uh, to the UNCG Libraries Online Learning and Innovation Webinar Series. I'm Sam Harlow, I'm the Online Learning Librarian as well as Liaison Kinesiology, Public Health Education and Community and Therapeutic Recreation. In this series of webinars or webcasts, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools, such as Canvas, Google, Box, and more. Um, these 30-minute webinars are recorded in WebEx meetings and placed on this library webpage that I'm about to drop into the chat. Uh, this page will also contain other links uh, if applicable to the presentation. So here's the chat. Um, we also give a file of the recording to the ITC uh, they can um, use for tutorials and stuff if they would like. So just a couple of things about the logistics of this. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. But feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenters. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate in the chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in the chat. Um, and I'll track the question while the presenter presents. So if you have any technical issues during the webinar, feel free to email or gchat me. I don't have a office phone, so that is the best method, but just remember worst case scenario, this is being recorded as well. So um, as I introduce Michelle, let me know if you have any questions over the chat. So today, December 4th, this session is hosted by Michelle Holkman and ITC for Health and Human Services, right, HHS. Um, and it is on the 10 tips for great web video. We're talking about web and video capture. Uh, so Michelle, you can begin. Okay, great. Thank you, Sam. Um, hi, Bruce. Nice to see you, more or less see you. Um, as Sam said, I am the ITC for the School of Health and Human Sciences here at UNCG. And I help faculty and staff to use the educational technology on campus. And um, quite often that ends up meaning working with video, doing lecture capture or web conferencing. And over the years, I've kind of developed some of these ideas of things that can help smooth you out your, um, your creation. My background is in digital multimedia and library science as well. So I tend to operate from the point of view that understanding and using video communication is every bit as important as using any other form of communication. It's all part and parcel of contemporary information literacy. So with a camera and a microphone and some software, we all can make videos now, but the question is how can we present ourselves and our message and our message in the best, most professional way? So I'm here to kind of go through some 10 tips. Some, some are fun, some maybe you've seen before to make the very best web videos you can and you can include web conferencing under that umbrella. So um, I timed this out. This is pretty much short and sweet. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. Maybe some of this you've heard before, maybe not. Um, but hopefully you'll get at least one takeaway that, that you can use. Okay, number one. This goes basic back to basic design thinking that I learned in uh, my undergrad. Um, you want to ask yourself three questions before you even get started. Um, start with the fundamentals and ask yourself, who is your audience? Now, this might seem obvious, but um, at least I know for myself, I can start talking like I'm talking to myself, like I know everybody knows what I know. Um, and thinking about audience can, can help with that. Um, if you think about it, you speak differently to your undergrads than you do your dean um, or your spouse, as far as that goes. So it will affect the level of the content, maybe the graphics that you use, even the words that you choose. It gives you the opportunity to focus on what the viewers need. Secondly, ask yourself about that message. I mean, this helps you to be concise in your communication and to focus. I mean, we. It, it, it seems like a lot to do for just maybe a little introductory lecture, but it helps things out, I think. Identify what it is you're trying to say, like, is this a course objective? Um, what do you want them to know or know how to do when you're done? And then three, why is it important? Um, what's the purpose? What exactly are you trying to accomplish? Are you building engagement? Are you just giving instruction? Are you trying to demonstrate something? 
Um, and all these three questions help you to focus your intention when you create your video. So on to number two. I hear people groaning. If there were more people, they would be groaning, but I think it's a good idea to create an outline. Um, now, I'm not saying to create a script or to spend a whole lot of time into it, but just take a little bit of time to make some notes and write down your main points. This helps you to organize your thoughts, and that helps you with doing things like I'm very notorious for doing, which is going um and ah, and it reduces rambling and jumping forth be between thoughts. Uh, one of the things you can work through during this particular portion of things is to think through how you might chunk your material into segments that are no longer than 5 to 12 minutes. Um, studies have shown that uh, the, this length of video aids in memory and retention, and as we all know, students only engage for so long. So try to break your things down. If your lecture is going to be a long one, maybe you need to make three short videos, but 5 to 12 minutes. Think it through, write it down, pay attention to the important things you know you want to say, and the order that you want to say them in. No present like the time is one of my favorite sayings. Um, it, it, this will take time. It, it is not an easy, easy peasy, one, two, three, easy process. Uh, and the more you can let yourself um, have plenty of room for the things that you need to do, the, the better your product will be. Um, rushing, rushing shows when you've tried to rush through something. You know you see it with your students. Um, you want to give yourself time to make mistakes times to do a do-over if you need to, and then after you're going to need time for encoding, uploading, and possibly editing. So all in all, your product will be a lot better if you just give yourself plenty of time. Number four, practice makes perfect. I know nobody wants to really practice their um, what they're going to say, but uh, if you could just take a little bit of time to do it, it will improve your end product. Uh, it helps you refine your message and get comfortable with the software, which is kind of a kind of a thing. If you're fumbling with software, uh, it is a less polished performance. But speaking of the software, here's a free tip. This is not one of the one of the ten. Um, try to learn the keyboard shortcuts for the software that you're using. It'll really uh, smooth things out for you. And if you can just practice it enough that you can do it without thinking you'll be able to just get through your um, recording that much quicker and smoother. This is one of my favorite is things, and it's kind of wacky. Um, loosen up. It's, uh, we all get a little stressed when we try to do recordings, and our, your mouth can get dry, so you want to keep water nearby, speaking of. And that keeps your mouth moist, and you can speak better. You want to do a little stretching. Stretch tall, maybe wiggle around, shake your hands out, stretch your neck. I'm a big fan of deep breathing. You breathe in for four, one, two, three, four. Hold it for two and breathe out for eight. Do that three times and you'll actually feel a difference in your body. And then finally, I like to use the announcer's test. Um, this is something I found. I have, a, I have a lot of trouble with mush mouth. I have to get my tongue to loosen up. So before I try to do recording or anything important, I do this test. Um, and it's, it's, it's done like a round or maybe you call it a pyramid. You say the first thing, then you say the first thing and the second thing, then you say the first, the second, and the third. So one hen, one hen, two ducks, one hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, one hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, and so on. By the time you get to 10 lyrical, spherical, diabolical denizens of the deep, I'm not going to read the rest of that. Your mouth will be really loosened up. You should try it. It really, really, it works great. Even though you sound kind of silly when you do it. Okay, so now we're talking about the production part of things. You've, you've done all your preparation. You got your mind set. Your equipment's working well. Let's talk about audio. Um, do a test. Don't just jump in, do a test and then listen to what you've got and especially listen to your environment. Um, these offices are notorious for having HVAC rattle. Uh, you want to listen for that. I have a lot of traffic outside my office and if I'm making a video, 
it can be very distracting. So you want to listen to voices or echoes in the hall. If you're at home, is there a dog barking? You might not even notice it because you're so used to it, but your viewers uh, after a while will start to be like, will that dog please shut up? And this all begins um, with doing a test. What we're trying for is good audio and good audio is defined as clean signal recorded at the right level. Clean means not muddy, no outside noises and no background interference. More audio. Get used to learn, get, learn to use your audio meters. Every piece of software has some little piece of this built in somewhere. Um, the image that is on the left is from a piece of, of audio software called Audacity, and the image on the right is from using Canvas Studio, which is a tool that we have here on campus. Um, what you're looking for most of the time is that the meter will go about three quarters of the way across, um, the bars will go about three quarters of the way across the meter, and what you're looking for is somewhere around minus six decibels. Um, but you can look at it just more like three quarters of the way across the meter. So I had a good, I had good signal on the, when I was using Audacity, but if you notice my bar is not very far across when I was using Studio and I probably wasn't wearing, well, you can see I wasn't wearing a headset, which leads me to my next point, And that is get yourself a noise canceling headset. If you're going to be doing a lot of recording, it'll make a world of difference. Uh, they can be had for as little as $25, and a lot of the time they can filter out those background noises um, that you want to try to avoid. So now moving on to visuals. I should try, to, well, my webcam's not hooked up. Didn't plan ahead, sorry guys. Um, get yourself an external webcam. I know that most of our laptops have a webcam built in, but get yourself um, what do I have here something like a Logitech C920 is what's showing in that picture and what I've got in my office um, the quality will be better and uh, you just have a better result overall and it's also a little bit more flexible when it comes to doing some some things I'll talk about in a second so again do a test shot and then take a look at what you've got uh, one common distraction is just busy backgrounds, having junk in your office, and um, you want to clear all that out. If you have something that's kind of cool, like a funky little desk toy, you can leave that in. It adds interest and builds instructor presence. Uh, do not shoot in front of a window. It's a, just a completely bad idea. If you have a window behind you, it will blow out the picture and you'll just be this kind of furry, hazy thing. Um, what you do want to try to do is have a window in front of you or some light in front of you. Avoid fluorescence. If you have fluorescence in your office, turn them off. They, they make you change a funny color and, um, and they have very harsh shadows. And I already said, clear away the clutter. More visuals. This is one of my favorite tricks. Um, Camera placement can make a world of difference in your shot. Well, I see a lot of users, at least in my department, who they're using in their laptop, they put their laptop on their desk, and they're sitting there looking down on the camera, and uh, it just isn't as effective. It's far better to have the camera at eye level or above. It's a lot like shooting a selfie. Raise the camera, and you just you look more pleasant. Try to have soft lighting from the front. I have a window in my office, so I have the window open in this particular picture. And again, like I said, avoid fluorescence. And then speaking of the camera, this is just something I've seen happen once in a while. Um, you can use, especially an external webcam for more than just shooting yourself. You can move around the room with it or show a product or use it for a group shot. Uh, my favorite one I saw was a teacher who used it to shoot, he was showing mirrors to try to demonstrate how light reflects off of convex and concave lenses. So you can think outside the box. This is a biggie, uh, I see this a lot. Uh, dress for success. 
Webcams, video cameras, any kind of camera just basically does not like to deal with um, checks, small stripes, small patterns. So you get that interference pattern. Um, even bold colors are, are, are technically not a good idea, although I've seen people do it successfully. The recommendation is to wear medium blue, gray, or pastels. I would say try to avoid red because uh, video cameras traditionally don't process that color very well. If you want to wear something bold, green does work pretty well, unless, of course, you're in front of a green screen. Okay, so now we're starting to get past the production part and get into post-production. Um, well, no, this is still production. Sorry, I'm, I went too fast. You're, you're sitting there, you're, you're making your video, it's rolling right along, and you make a mistake. Okay, don't stop the recording. This is a trick somebody taught me. Take your hand off the mouse and just sit back for a second. Recording can keep running. Take a breath and then start over a logical place and, and move on. Then you go back and edit the mistake out of the clip. And because you didn't stop it, it's much easier to find a point um, to do the edit. Now, I know a lot of people don't, don't think they have access to um, recording or uh, editing software. Well, Screencast-O-Matic is $18 per year, and that allows you to have uh, 15 minutes of recording and um, a little bit of editing, some limited editing. Since you're going to chunk your material, you should be easily uh, able to stay within that 15 minutes. The piece of software that I like to recommend is Camtasia, and it's $126 a license, and you can have it on two machines, so one at the office, one at home. Adobe Premiere is free. Very good. Okay, great. Everybody's got something then. Um, anyway, I'll just finish talking about Camtasia. If you know, if you know Premiere, no problem. You got everything you need. Um, some kind of editing, audio enhancing. What I like about Camtasia is the ability to have like text callouts and labels, and on top of the regular editing, things I would go through um, Premiere. And it would take me extra time because I'd be doing multiple levels and, and working in Photoshop as well. Um, Camtasia's kind of got that built in. So it's really meant to be more for um, instructional purposes, I think. Number nine, the one we all know and love, caption your videos. Um, we know that accessibility standards require it, but I think students are expecting it more and more because they're trying to watch videos in public or they've got roommates around or in their noisy places. And, and obviously non-native English speakers like it because it helps them with comprehension. So ways to do captions, we know about YouTube. You can upload to YouTube and get them to automatically caption in some degree of success. My favorite right now is to make your videos and upload to Canvas Studio, which we have here as part of our learning management system here on campus. And it does automatic captioning, um, or you can request it to do automatic captioning. It's 85% correct. I've had very good results for it, and it's very easy to fix, um, very easy to edit the captions when they're done. And you can see what you see there on the right is um, uh, me editing some captions. As far as web conferencing goes, uh, I believe that if you're using WebEx, we have automatic uh, captioning. I, I have read that Skype, it is in progress, but they don't have it ready yet. And then also, as far as being on campus, using Google Meet, um, we are in beta testing uh, automatic captioning there. And of course, you can always do it the hard way, which is typing it up, but uh, nobody really enjoys doing that. And then number 10, end with a summary. Um, it's just good pedagogy. You are, you're going to tell people what information you're going to tell them. You provide the information, then you tell them what you told them. And this is all about helping with cognitive load and retention. So having said that, here's my summary. talked about audience and message, creating an outline, making sure you have plenty of time, practicing, loosening up using that uh, announcer's test, um, check your audio and check your video, don't stop when you're doing your recording, you can go back and edit later, 
Make sure you caption and end with a summary. That's everything I've got. Like I said, this is pretty much a quickie. Um, and, and I'd be happy to take any questions that, well, Sam or Bruce have. Hey, Michelle, um, I think you kind of answered que Bruce's question, but he did ask about does, is there a site wide camp, a university wide license for Camtasia? Um, and I said, I think not usually departments buy it, but you can answer that. And then the other that question is, that, had, is, that is correct. We do not have a, a, a university wide license for that. Yeah, and then the other one that he asked at the end was, if I caption a video in Canvas Studio, can I post it elsewhere in YouTube for wider distribution? And then um, Bruce asked if it was also click wrapped approved in um, Camtasia. In Camtasia? Um, is Camtasia click wrapped? Everybody uses it, so I, I really don't know. I mean, it's click wrapped. It's just we don't have a university wide license. Right, right, right. I think that I think that's a fair way of looking at it. I can look it up in the back end, but. Um, well, OK, so then answer the question about about studio. Um, you create a video, you upload it. To studio, you caption it. I believe at that point you can download it. I mean, it's a multiple step process. There's no one easy way to do it, but download it and then upload it to YouTube. But um, since you're going to link everything from studio anyway, I mean, once you have it in there, you can you can share the link in in multiple places. Um, I'm not sure that they, you would need to do that extra step. Make sense? Anything else? Thanks. Um, and I did just look it up on the back end. Okay. List of reviewed click wrap software licenses, and all of TechSmith is click wrapped, um, oh, which perfect. is Camtasia. So that would also include Snagit, Jing. Um, right, right. Well, good. That's a re there's a reason why we're all using it then, huh? Yes. So you're fine to use it, but um, having a site wide license means I think that ITS would pay for it, right? Yeah. I don't think they don't do that. Like, like yeah. for example, in the library, like if we want it, we talk to our library ITS and, you know, they either buy it for us or they don't. Right. And that's how I ended up. Well, actually, I purchased it myself anyway. Yeah, I use it a lot. I like it. I do too. Um, Bruce says ITS also does not support it. Right. Um, yeah. I, you know, my experience is though is most of the ITCs will, will know enough about it. Yeah, it they can help. Your, I guess your ITC. I will say, like in the library, um, you know, we only buy licenses for people who either ask for it or need it for their job. So, like, I have one. Um, but see, once you buy a license, like either through your department or whatever, it does come with tech support. So, um, if something were to go wrong on like the TechSmith end, you know, you get an email that you can um, ask them questions too. So, I remember correctly, they have a pretty robust help um, area that's right built right into the software. They do, and their documentation is really good in my experience. I agree. Um, and if, but if you know Premiere, you're going to find Camtasia super easy to use. Yes, I would agree. Cool. I use Camtasia a lot more than Premiere. <laughs> I do too, but. because it does. It's a tool that's that's um, oriented towards doing instructional things. Yes. Yes, Less all the videos I make here are perfect for Camtasia. Great. Um, are there any other questions, Bruce, or um, comments or anything before we kind of wrap up right at 25 minutes? Um, <laughs> as you think of anything uh, as we're doing, yes. this is the last uh, webinar for the online learning series for the semester. Um, we also have another one called research and applications on, um, you know, research data, like library kind of tools. Um, I'm in the process of making the schedule for the spring. So um, you are welcome to let me know if you have any uh, ideas or comments or want to host one um, or tell your friends and we'll do it that way as well. Um, and some topics that have been thrown out to me, we're going to do one on Canvas Studio, which Michelle mentioned today. We're going to do one on their quizzing features. And um, for the research and applications, we're going to be talking about some digital humanities tools, some stuff about researcher identity. So like making ORCID IDs, scholarly communication stuff um, and more. So stay tuned. Uh, we will definitely uh, be advertising this through ITC's uh, library liaisons and Campus Weekly.
So great. Well, I hope you all have a good end of the semester. And thank you, Sam. The finals. Uh, yeah, we're all going to make it. Yeah, we're Thanks very close now. Thank you. I'll see y'all later. Bye.